a one, a two, a one, two, three. Hello, everybody, all you Star Wars fans, gamers, and Swotor players. This is an update of the current status of Swotor in particular in regards to the PvP scenery after the various updates that have been brought up after Ossos, this new planet that we're actually seeing and which we were doing the peanut butter jelly dance. So first thing is the gear has changed. There's been a soft reset, let's say. And there's a lot of returning players, so there's no numbers for this, but um, I've seen through my guild and uh, through the conquest that there's lots more points being pitched in by all the guilds. So there seems to be a growing population of either returning players or new players. And some are a bit sort of either lost on what to do to catch up or are unaware of how things were and this sort of uh, creates uh, confusion sometimes so I wanted to sort of explain all of this so until before Osus we had uh, and shortly after the top gear you could get which is measured in rating um, as you can see here is 248 Osus brought up 252 and 258 gear which can be obtained only through quests in Osus the majority of the game at now is spent grinding that specific gear and the methods implied to do that so this has actually um and this has happened gradually through a series of patches previously you would grind your gear with command crates uh, which were boxes you would get once you reached top level and that had four tires every 100 level above the top level you would get one box and every hundreds level you would get access to a better box until we got to level 4. You could and can find 248 gear, which was the top ranking system. This introduction sort of made it much easier for players to get to the top uh, ranking gear. Basically everybody can access top end gear without having to raid or specifically PvP, but, but just doing activities that give experience basically above level 70 and slowly they should accumulate through these crates once they reach level 300 command um, accessibility to this gear. Now, um, all of this is sort of redundant except for the, the items that you can use to acquire some of this gear. Most of all you need some crystals which have been introduced into the game through the quests and daily quests on also And you can get so many during the week. There's a monumental at first is the first kind of crystal you can get and it gets you access it gives you access to level 252 degrader but what changed the game um, well that w let's just talk about the 252 to 58 so to see to buy 252 gear you need um, two Stay alive. monumental crystal master masterwork crystals so I always confuse the two but the, the minor ones basically which you get through yeah. weekly quests basically and these give you each item cost two of these items and it gives access to the 252 gear. To get the 258 gear you need more crystals generally depending on the piece from two to four. You also need the shell of the 252 item. This changed at some point you uh, could keep the previous item before now they change it so you can remove all the uh, augments inside and stuff and then sell the shell because the shell will be kept by the merchant in, in exchange of the 258 piece gear. So these 258 items at first could be, can you can buy them with basically the 252 item and a lot of the new crystals for uh, for the chest and etc. But then they introduced the main hand weapon and the off hand weapon which requires a new kind of crystal which is called the monumental and as you can see here you require the old sword, five masterwork crystals and two monumental crystals. So to get both the main hand and the off hand you need to get the monumental crystals. Now this applies for both PvE players and PvP players because there's no distinction between the two kind of gears. Um, and the quest they introduced to put this is a double quest as you can see here the mass what, whatever it's called. While the other quests rotate and sort of every week is different this one has stayed the same but you can either kill the new raid boss Genosian Queen on veteran mode which isn't quite easy to find on pugs or you can win 50 solo arenas. Win, well, no. You have to do 50 matches, and a win is counts 5, and a loss counts 1. But this has um, pitched a lot of new players, because uh, this part of the quest is actually more doable than finding a group that kills the Genosian Queen. But 
so the general population has just basically gone uh, through the solo ranked uh, side of the quest to access the top end gear. Revitalizing an area of the game that was a bit lonely at the time for the update. And not many players played solo, the queues didn't pop up a lot. You can get solo and group arenas basically. But now a lot of players that previously didn't do arena are back in the arena. Other than this, the uh, PvP system has changed since skank tanks are not a thing. And so now arena is pretty much about um, tanks guarding every switching guard and healers keeping up the rest of the group until the DPS kills out everything. This as far as the 4v4 is compromises a tank and a healer, which usually happens on peak hours, solo group finder, which is now available and pops up a lot more than um, until three months ago. While not in peak hours, the group finder will sort of match whatever it finds, and this creates um, a lot of attrition between players, I think, because um, there's a lot of raging inside the ranked community, and there was uh, a lot more before this general flow of population in. but there's still people who are sort of intimidated by this and this is this is not a guide it's more some advice that i can give you on how why this is happening and how to deal with it eventually and why there's frustration on the other side so maybe understanding that and being able to deal with it i've don't always respect the ignore uh, function so i've actually talked enraged players um, and I've sort of kind of understood why they're upset and I'll try and unravel it here for you. Um, although I, I don't agree too much. The general point seems to be that everybody and their sister and dog do PvP now, ranked PvP, and they don't know what they're doing and this sort of ruins the um, ranking of the players that do it seriously. Uh, now, um, the rank doesn't really have an importance and the people who have it high tend to be cheating a bit apparently or well and that's another subject that has to be talked of and i think it's misunderstood as well because this concept of trade winning is called very conveniently but it can happen in different degrees um, and the most annoying of course is within the ranking community and with the ranking games and all you need to do is to have some players on both sides to sort of manipulate and you need just you just have to be in the same guild to be able to um, have the same chat or just use discord uh, this can happen in minor ways uh, in in unranked war zones as well and you can just be i don't know it depends some guilds can have let's just call it brothership or whatever so during a game on a guild chat where they're pitched on opposite sides they could uh they could help each other and even there i mean it's it's a bit like the MVP system, which it's polite to try and vote everybody else and vote each other. So even the MVP system is not really an indicator of a player's most being the most valuable. Um, but I, I won't even get into that. What I think is relevant is understanding why there is so much rage. Uh, players seem to be very aggressive and very vocal and very insisting in telling other players how, how to play and what they should do and the sort of get good attitude. I, I wanted to let other people sort of uh, explain this argument as well from a different perspective from just Swatter and also I don't want to steal anybody's voice but I also think that more voices uh, make uh, an argument more sound so I'll try and let other YouTubers explain these points without covering things that have been covered by others and, and not doing it properly. So um, I'll leave you to a couple of clips and maybe get back uh, to discussing those points after. My name is Kid Lee and it's time for another Star Wars The Old Republic news update. Now I'm sure as most of you are aware, the toxic general chat or chat in general is something that's always been a little bit of an issue in SOTOR and it's something that continues to increase as time has sort of gone along. With Bioware's limited resources, they're not really able to do anything directly about it, and they've sort of handed that off to the players. Now, one question that's come up a bunch over the last couple of years and has come up again has actually been answered by the developers here recently. And that question is, is there a way to get an account-wide ignore feature in both directions to help manage and mitigate the toxic of the public chat channels? So the developers went on to say, that an account-wide feature of this manner is something that they definitely like and they are going to look into. 
And sort of part two on that is they think they need to find a way to automatically clean up these lists for accounts that have been banned, such as the advertisers and gold spammers. So basically people are maxing out their current list in general, and we also need to find a way to clean that list out in addition to making it account wide. So I thought that was pretty interesting that the devs are indeed going to look at this. So for those who don't know, if you don't play PvP, there's been a lot of issues with PvP for a long time. And again, it's an issue that continues to happen to this day. Whether or not it's actually getting worse or not, I couldn't tell you. But it kind of goes down to, all right, so if the developers are getting a bunch of these in-game requests, do they have somebody on their end who's actually going to have the time to look at all of these hundreds, if not thousands of reports, and then actually work through them and either ban them or suspend them or, you know, whatever. I, if, if there's that much cheating going on, I don't know if Bioware would have somebody available to actually do that. I mean, that could potentially be a full-time job on its own, again, depending on how much, you know, hacking and cheating is really going on. So the only time will tell on that and be interesting to see if they actually add that as an option in the future. Uh, switching on over to, uh... No, I think that there's less hacking, or I'm not even sure if there ever was any, uh, to this degree. Uh, there is some sort of exploiting on the group finder to that. There, this causes a lot of grief um, in the interactions between, let's call them, casuals and PvPers. Hushmojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most toxic video game communities. <laughs> for this list, we're looking at those communities revolving around a single game or series of games that are generally considered to be rude and unwelcoming, or a combination thereof. We'll only be focusing on the video games themselves, so communities revolving around console fanboys or the, ahem, PC master race will not be included, as annoying as they are. And hey, if you love these games and you're not too toxic, cool story bro, we love you. Keep playing nice. <laughs> Acular, featuring some of the most impressive worlds and challenging gameplay we've ever seen. Unfortunately, with the series' infamous difficulty comes an elitist, hardcore community who feel as if they are superior to the filthy casuals of gaming due to their mastering of the complex series. Those who seek help or guidance in these notoriously opaque games are often told to just get good, which is always helpful, right? Finally, the online community isn't so great, as it's filled with constant showboaters, hackers, and lagstabbers, adding a layer of frustration that even the developers didn't fully intend. Number 9. FIFA Series Get the ball! Oh my god! <laughs> the series has a history with hackers ruining the infrastructure of the games, but it's the general attitude in the matches themselves that annoy people the most. Number 8. Day Z Evolves around a sense of community. Ironically, it has since developed into the lawless wasteland that is known as today, simply based on the notion that people are dicks. Whoa! Due to the nature of the game, DayZ is essentially an asshole simulator, seemingly bringing out the most sadistic trolls in the gaming community, intent on one thing and one thing only, killing you, taking your stuff, and erasing hours of progress. It seems that no matter your intentions, whether you want to scavenge in silence or approach someone with friendly intentions, you'll end up getting a bullet or KOS regardless. We understand that this is supposed to add an element of danger and realism, but in the end, it can get really, really annoying. Okay, okay, I don't think we didn't know. Hmm. Well, okay, but uh, sort of let's try not to be too harsh, uh, impartial, partial, partial, yes. Let's try and be a bit more impartial. In defense of this, uh, as we've seen, I mean, it's not something unique to Swodor. It's not also something unique to the world. Let's not be naive. Uh, it's not like everybody you will meet you would like. Um, so there is that. There's also, I think, uh, a problem of uh, in intra-generation uh, interaction, uh, which is not immediately apparent. So you never know who you're talking to and what age they are and what is appropriate or not appropriate or with their condition or even what they expect from the game and uh, the, the same thing goes from them to you. They don't know what you expect from the game and uh, uh, they have ex everybody has expectations of the cooperation of everybody else and also of the efficiency. Um, so there is uh, on one hand side we can call it elitist, uh, on the other we can also uh, see how maybe the younger generations see video games as more important and so they see uh, efficiency in the video games as more more important as well but all of this has origins I think uh, not with the very younger players but with uh, players who have experience uh, of previous PvP systems um, or even the previous Swotor system, uh, I am uh, speaking this in Italian, so accent, so it's clear, and yeah, so basically it's, uh, I'm talking about resilience, or I'm not sure how it was, this was the name in WoW, and um, 
it had a different name in Swator, and it was basically a, a different value um, in your gear that would be in gear specifically for PvP players. So in 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 WoW, World of Warcraft, it came with arenas, I think, um, basically smaller fights instead of 8v8 or 16v16, something like 4v4 or 3v3. And the Swater one is 4v4, as you know. But um, there was a grind for the gear and uh, different ratings. Ratings sort of based on, I think, the, the chess system. Different sort of higher ratings gave you traditionally access to um, different levels of gear with higher defense for PvP, mostly. So basically, uh, having a lot of this resilience, or whatever it was called in the version of the game you were playing, um, meant you were more capable, to, your gear was more capable to PvP, and somebody who was doing PvE would be in a disadvantage. On one hand, this made it so that in the ranked games, or the games that were important that for rewards, that you actually needed the defense to get there and you wouldn't be able to play those games, the system wouldn't just basically pitch you against high, hopefully, against higher rating teams. And so basically it, you, you would, for players who were very navigated in PvP, I suppose you would avoid having to play with new players, which is uh, fair enough. I mean, if, you, if you're good at that activity and you spend a lot of time on it, you don't want to have to spend it's like if you're playing football and if you've uh, graduated to a certain league, you don't want to have to go and play games in lower leagues or you might not be as excited. Let's put it that way and that is fair enough. Due to how the gearing is going to work, if you are a PvP player, you might be compelled to dip your toes into PvE content and if you're a PvE player, you might be compelled to get into PvP content. First of all though, let's get through the content of Brian's post. His overall post was about the gear involved in the PvP system of Legion because that is something that had people a little bit confused since BlizzCon. So, item level matters to a very small degree in Legion. In all queued PvP content, characters have a set statistic profile, which is scaled up or down based on their item level. Trying to find some videos to explain how resilience was introduced in World of Warcraft. Join us for every blind, every cyclone, and every moment of enthralling combat. As for a few more seconds down at 49% HP, we see though, uh, Skillcat making a swap over onto Botar. He is in bear form, he's got the bar skin up. Will it be enough? Adrenaline Rush comes out from Prey. He's looking to try and secure an early kill here, down to 30% HP. Botar kiting away, still in bear. Swaps are getting cloned up, but Botar gets, snags himself a nice nature swiftness, which will stabilize his health and continue his team on the in this point game. Is yep. that it's now been removed for, has been removed for a while now in uh, Swator. The gear for PvE and PvP players, and especially accessing the top tier gear, is a process that is available mostly to all. So this removes the notion of ganking, which um, I think isn't really the, the most fun ass. PvP uh, <laughs> Gank. you can find out there. But before we go into a further to definition swindle. of ganking, which I'll let somebody else to do steal. Um, in a more fun way, uh, to kill I just want to say that this leaves used in online games. Swatter PvP in a much more uh, G -R -N -K. anything can happen situation for every PvP match. So your gear doesn't really matter. It's not an FPS, of course. You need to grind your gear to the top to be able to sort of compete at your best. But you don't need to specifically dump a lot of hours into sp just that activity to then be able to do it. Um, and this sort of prevents people who wanted this sort of airbag um, against people who weren't part of their community. And um, it was just basically a par, um, which made things unfair and basically a gank. Um, so I'm not for it. But uh, what does gank mean at that point? And I'll let somebody else. So I'll leave you with this video of somebody else, click them, I think this Nixum, he's really cool and funny, check him out like all the other YouTubers. Gee, it sure is a beautiful day, isn't it, Mr. Flowers? I drink the blood of children.
<laughs> You're so silly, Mr. Flowers. Sacrifice me to the old ones. Slit my throat. Bring me a virgin. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. But once we get home, all right. Oh, hello there, friend. Enjoying the day? Oh, yeah. I totally am. <laughs> Take this. <laughs> Mr. Flowers? M Mr. Flowers! You... you big jerk! What's the matter with you? <laughs> oh, oh, Mr. Flowers. Morning. <coughs> it makes me feel like a... It makes me feel like... Ah, ganking lobies is so rewarding. It makes me feel like a... Ganking lobies is so rewarding. It makes me feel like I'm actually good at PvP. It makes me feel like I'm actually good at PvP. Hey, Night Elf! Listen, I know you have family issues. I know that there was a lot of anger in your household growing up, but do you really have to take it out on me? It's just plain mean. Don't you feel bad? Don't you feel guilty for killing players who can't defend themselves? Well, gosh, how do you, how do you put it like that? I mean, not really. <laughs> hey, turn around. Oh boy. Haha, <laughs> you didn't realize it would come to this, did you? Facing down the rank one torn warrior on the server? I've got every single PvP achievement, every mount, every piece of this season's best gear, and you, you Night Elf, I will crush you! Wow, that really is impressive. Ready your blade, Death Knight. We finish this now. Nah, nah I'm just gonna log out. I'll see ya. I haven't been able to find um, any video that would show the introduction of um, World of Warcraft's arena system and the resilience, nor the removal of uh, the equivalent in Swotor. So I'll leave you with a video that sort of explains the origins of the PvP vs PvE player approach, which I think is very much in Warcraft because it has a lot of demography and is a long-standing game. During the game's initial release, there actually wasn't any PvP system at all. They couldn't finish it in time, so the only reason to kill people was to kill people. It was only in patch 1.4 was when we got an actual structured system and rewards for PvPing. This is the old rank 14 PvP system for World of Warcraft. Basically, the way it worked was when you killed players, you got something called an honorable kill. You could get this anywhere you could every week, you would earn or lose progress towards your next rank. Why did you want these ranks? For gear. The higher rank you were, the better gear you got, but I'll get into that more in a bit. So, you were competing against the opposite faction because you had to kill them, and you were also competing with members of the same faction because you had to PvP more than them to rank up. So, it was a constant battle to keep PvPing to climb the standing, and if you didn't do it even for a week, the penalties were high and you would lose a lot of progress. But, as you would imagine since people were in competition with each other, this would often result in harassment and social engineering of players to sabotage their standing. So, there were 14 ranks total listed here, and the amount of points you got per honor kill increased the higher ranked player you killed. Killing a Grand Marshal would give way more in comparison to a Private, for example. Although the highest level rewards were obtained in ranks 12 to 14, you did get access to special items for every rank. At rank 1, Private or Scout, you got a Tabard, and at rank 2, you got your PvP Trinket which freed you from certain crowd control abilities, a must have for PvP. I won't go over every rank, but feel free to pause this chart if you want to see every reward. Rank 6 was special because it didn't give you access to just an item, but rather a special room. The portals for these rooms are now removed on live servers, but to even be able to zone into the officers' quarters where all of the best vendors were, you needed to rank up to 6, and when it was first introduced, you had to maintain these ranks to even be able to use the items. It was later changed to where you just needed to reach the rank once, 
and if you de-ranked, you could still use the items. Big ranks that everyone wanted were 11 through 14. At 11, you got the epic mount. At rank 12, you started getting the purple set. This was the marshal for alliance and general for horde, and you got the set gloves, leggings, and boots. Rank 13, which was the field marshal for alliance and warlord for horde, gave you the purple helmet, shoulders, and chest, completing the set. And the max, rank 14, which was the Grand Marshal for Alliance and the High Warlord for Horde, gave you all of the weapons. This rank was limited to the top 0.1% of the same faction for players of your server. Needless to say, very few people reached this rank because it was insanely time consuming. We're talking like 12 to 14 hours a day. Okay, thank you very much for watching and thank you very much to all the YouTubers who, who I that, that, that took their voice. Uh, and arguments uh, to, 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 to uh, further mine check their videos uh, do some pvp have fun uh, take it easy and why so serious oh.